Good morning and welcome to Thought for the Day on Tuesday the 17th of January. Today's reading is Psalm 106 and it is taken from the English Standard Version of the Bible. Praise the Lord. O give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord or declare all his praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favour to your people. Help me when you save them, that I may look upon the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. <clears throat> Both we and our fathers have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedness. Our fathers, when they were in Egypt, did not consider your wondrous works. They did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love, but rebelled by the sea, at the Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make known his mighty power. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it became dry, and he led them through the deep as though through a desert. So he saved them from the hand of the foe and redeemed them from the power of the enemy. And the waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them was left. Then they believed his words, they sang his praises, but they soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but they had a wanton craving in the wilderness and put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked, but sent a wasting disease among them. When men in the camp were jealous of Moses and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord, the earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. Fire also broke out in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped a metal image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their Saviour, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to turn away his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land, having no faith in his promise. They murmured in their tents and did not obey the voice of the Lord. Therefore he raised his hand and swore to them that he would make them fall in the wilderness and would make their offspring fall among the nations, scattering them among the lands. Then they yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to the dead they provoked the Lord to anger with their deeds, and a plague broke out among them. Then Phineas stood up and intervened, and the plague was stayed, and that was counted to him as righteousness from generation to generation forever. They angered him at the waters of Meribah, and it went ill with Moses on their account, for they made his spirit bitter. 
and he spoke rashly with his lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord commanded them, but they mixed with the nations and learned to do as they did. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to the demons. They poured out innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus they became unclean by their acts and played the whore in their deeds. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against his people and he abhorred his heritage. He gave them into the hands of the nations so that those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them and they were brought into subjection under their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were rebellious in their purposes and were brought low through their iniquity. Nevertheless, he looked upon their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant and relented according to the abundance of his steadfast love. He caused them to be pitied by all those who held them captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Here we have a potted history of Israel, if you will. The story of a faithful God and a forgetful, rebellious people. Verse 7, they did not remember. Verse 13, they soon forgot. Verse 21, they forgot God. Verse 24, having no faith in his promise. The list goes on. What shines out from this psalm is God's steadfast love and grace in response. Again and again, when Israel, in a crisis of their own making, remembers and cries out to God, we are told he remembered his covenant and relented according to the abundance of his steadfast love. How quickly we forget. In times of despair, it is natural to fall to our knees and cry out to God. But when things are good, it is all too easy to get distracted by the world, to forget to place God in the centre and allow him to be pushed out to the sidelines. My study notes describe this psalm as a community lament. This is not about the psalmist alone, but about the nation as a group. We live in a culture of individuality. You do you. We tend to place an emphasis on individual faith, on individual responsibility for individual sin. These are, of course, very important. The whole basis of our Christianity is a personal relationship with God. If some failing or wrongdoing in the church comes to light, our instinct is to distance ourselves from it to make it the individual responsibility of those who were directly involved. But we are more than a collection of individuals. We are also part of a body. I wonder if we sometimes ignore the church relationship with God. We do collective worship, 
But how often do we think about our collective responsibility for what our church does or doesn't do? How often do we collectively repent for something that our church has got wrong? And not just the church as a global entity, but my church or my home group. As a community of Christ, we are all responsible for and accountable to each other. In verse 23, we have Moses standing in the breach to plead for his nation despite their wrongdoing. As Christians, we're in the privileged position of having Christ standing in the breach for us. But I have to ask myself, when am I standing in the breach for others? Reflecting on this psalm has really challenged me about the collective nature of our faith and my part in it. Perhaps it has challenged you too. I hope we can, together, examine our collective conscience from time to time. Let us hold each other to account. Let us stand in the breach for each other. And in the words from verse 48, let all the people say Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.